first spoke that we are going to launch a Happy Diamond campaign, the team said, well, we need, we would have, we would be nice to have an ambassadress or ambassadresses with a beautiful smile. So for me, immediately I said, Julia Roberts. For me, she's the most beautiful smile on the planet. Um, who doesn't like pretty woman? Who would not like to be pretty woman? And I think she's also this type of actress that shines from inside out. She is a happy person. First of all, I think you have to be happy with yourself. Um, because if you're not happy with yourself, you cannot give happiness. Um, I always see the glass half full, not half empty. And waking up in a good mood, um, going to work in a good mood, bringing some good moods to your team, I think is um, essential. Well, I've heard from him through the film festival in Cannes. He is one of the darlings of the film festival one of the youngest directors. He was immediately also enchanted. This was a very good choice. The end result, I think, is great. Actually, uh, the Happy Diamond concept exists uh, much longer than I've been with the company. The inventor of the name Happy Diamonds is actually my mom, because she said, when a person is free, is happy. So when a diamond is free, it's happy. But um, it's always fascinated me how these little diamonds are spinning around and actually talk about dancing, they're dancing uh, within the pieces of jewelry or the watches or the happy sport. I was very surprised because I was still in school when I designed that little, that little clown. Um, actually a clown because I used to love to go to the circus. So I designed the little clown with the diamonds in the tummy because the classical happy diamond already existed. And as a surprise, my father, he saw that little design. He produced it for me as a surprise for Christmas. And I thought it was a unique piece, but that was not the end of it. So one time I went to the workshop and I saw lots of clowns. I said, Daddy, what's that? He said, you won't understand. You'll understand this later. This is commercial. So that's really the beginning of the jewelry. The first thing my father taught me how to do is to read the time. Before the ABC, I had to know how to read the time. So he came back once from a trip from America and they had been to Disneyland and he brought me this Mickey Mouse watch. So that's how I learned how to read time. When I probably invented the happy sport, it was most of all because I was uh, doing a lot of sports. That's why the name sport is there. Um, and I really, at Chopin we had the Samurites, which was a cool sporty watch. But for me there was this sort of sparkle missing. So I really wanted something with a bit of sparkle that you could wear 24 hours, meaning you can go swimming, water skiing, play tennis, go shopping, take the kids to school, go to the office. And if you have no time, you dress because you have little diamonds running around in a cocktail. So that was for me the free spirit because today's women, they are all working or doing something or whether it's taking care of six kids or whether it's charitable work or whether it's traveling or whether it is working. And this watch is just perfect for it. This is a crazy idea to put diamonds in a steel case. Diamonds are normally posted in white gold or in platinum. I say, where is it written? Then I can't put them in steel. No, it's, a, it's not a noble metal. Um, it's not a precious metal. And I said, yeah, but it's cool and it's young and it's fun and you can wear it 24 hours around the clock. I really had to fight my way through with this watch. I'm a very persistent person. For me, no is not an answer. And if you tell me no, I get double going. And then when it came to producing it, it was another challenge because everybody sort of said, She's gone a bit crazy. She's, um... And this person in the workshop said, for every watch that you sell, I'm going to give you a rose. At the end of the day, as we had this little bet going on, the manager of the workshop, the head of the workshop, um, he held his promise. And one, one sunny morning, I received a beautiful rose tree for my garden. Originally, in the classical Happy Diamonds, they were just allowed to spin around 
the, the movement, the case. So they were somehow in a circle. Um, in the happy spot, they're totally free because they're floating over the wash. This was a challenge, because uh, a technical challenge, because we had to find the aesthetical look between um, the case, the dial, the first sapphire crystal, the layer of the happy diamonds and the next sapphire crystal, which makes it quite complicated um, for aesthetics. For me, the happy diamonds is always actually when you already say happy, uh, it says it all. They're free. They're actually free. They're not stuck in a setting um, where they can't move. At this time, I was really not thinking of shaking the watchmaking business. I was just doing my job, which is my passion, which is creating and designing. And I basically, yes, maybe came up with something very unusual, unexpected, but this is often the best creations. Um, but I didn't know that we would come that far with that watch. Sometimes, you know, I meet new, new clients. I mean, maybe they come into another part of Chopin, the hydrory, but they all somehow are connected to Chopin through the Happy Diamond. So somehow this Happy Diamond opens the doors to Chopin. And a lot of young, young girls, I see them wearing it or wanting it for their graduation. Well, it's a watch that somehow really goes through generations. And I think this is um, how icons are born, when something you pass on from the grandmother to the mother to the mother to the daughter. And also this, I was not aware then when I designed it first that this would be the case. So that makes me feel a little bit proud. It was, uh, <laughs> it was in a very boring marketing meeting. <laughs> I got so bored, so normally when I get bored, I start designing. So I doodled around. We had these like long chains already with the um, simple hearts, just empty hearts, which I also designed. And I said, what about if I just give it some color? So I started coloring the hearts. Um, and actually like many times, the things are really at your doorstep and you don't see it. And that's how it came up. Jewelry should be nice to touch, like I'm touching the clown now. Um, it has to be also a feel-good, a feel-good moment when you touch. It's not just the look; it's also the touch. I always make the stocking test, which means I take a pair of silk stockings and I rub it over. And if the silk stocking doesn't break, it means the setting is good. I wore the happy spot which is one of my favorites. I've actually put on the first today, which is the first re-edition, limited edition. So there's a big difference to this one, to the first one, which is it's now housing an own house uh, automatic movement. But I wore it mixed, mixed and mishmash. You see, I have a happy, happy diamond bangles. I have some beautiful diamond bracelets. I have iconic clown today. So I think you can really dress it up and dress it down. This is the beauty of the Happy Sport. Um, even the steel one you can easily wear with a diamond ring. <laughs>